Hello, this is Dr. Alex C. I'm back. Uh, I would like to carry on the second part, which is to show you or demonstrate to you the purposefully usefulness of uh, using the event structure. It's going to be purposeful and useful. Uh. So uh, to begin, I'm going to save my this uh, event.labview project explorer. Uh. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to right click on my, my project, my first project folder, right click, I'm going to create a new VI. Okay, so I'm going to do a Windows tile left and right. And I would like to sh uh, quickly add in a while loop. Okay, a while loop as usual and add a control which is a stop button as you can see over here. Now, uh, and then what I'm going to do next is uh, I will like to add in under structures. Okay, this is something new. I'm going to add in this thing called the uh, event structure. Okay. So add in this event structure. Now basically events are occurrence of the program uh, that requires so-called servicing. Uh. So uh, you will see shortly the, the impact of using event in this program. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to on the iteration count here, I'm going to right click and create an indicator like what we did earlier. And I'm going to call this uh, loop counter. Right, I'm going to resize it. Okay, this loop counter. Okay, so later on we will uh, just to demonstrate to you uh, how is it different from the earlier polling program. So I'm going to call this uh, event structure uh, application. Uh, this is like an application program. Uh, a simple uh, program to illustrate to you the use of uh, event structure. Now, so what happened is in this event structure, right, we need to configure it uh, so that it handles the, the different types of uh, so-called user interface uh, because events are occurrence on the front panel, right? The user may click on the stop button, click on the OK button and so on. Uh, then you will trigger something. So let's say if I add another, say call, um, add another OK button here and I'll call it run first, okay? simple one okay i'll call this run first huh? okay so uh okay let's uh, quickly select the button label and turn okay run first huh? okay then i'm going to duplicate this one call run second huh? for example okay just to demonstrate okay, so basically uh, now i have uh three buttons here i'm going to break this one also so currently i have three buttons right i have the stop button i have a run first boolean button and a run second boolean button now what you're going to do is that i'm going to select the event structure right click on it i'm going to add an event right since that uh, when the user clicks on a button say the stop button an event takes place eh? okay so let's click on this uh, event structure now, once you launch the uh, this event structure, a window pops up like this. So uh, now these are uh, the few ways to look at this. Uh, now you have the event sources. Okay, now these are the source of uh, happenings are uh, so-called in this program. Eh? All right. Now there are all the uh, controls will be shown over here, right? Because these will fire an event, right? So I'm going to select the event called the stop stop button uh. so this is one of the source of an event right when you user click on the stop button something triggers eh. okay so this is called the event source uh. so i'm selecting the stop button now once i select the stop button right uh, on the right hand side is this thing called the events so what happens so the left view would ask would ask you uh, what do you want to detect eh? now there are different things you can detect right but really for us to begin with is the this thing called value change uh value change means that whenever the user clicks on the stop button right it's initially at the initial state is false condition right so when you click on it it becomes true so there's a value change you see so we are selecting the value change event now of course the event source is the stop button so then they will ask you the uh, this is automatically generated for you the event specifiers so what are the happenings here so you have the value change, right? So let's take a look here. So after selected this, right? The first very simple one, uh, it will tell you there's an event case. Uh. You notice 
I, I can create different case, much very much like a case structure in fact. But this is the first case and call it the stop uh, button, the stop event, uh, the stop event, the event source is stop and the occur the things that happen, the event is when there's a bad change in value. Right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click OK. Now you will see that over here, my lab view now has this thing called a uh, stop, right? Stop for value change. You can see over here. So I've created the first event case. Uh, so I'm going to pull this stop button inside and I'm going to wire the stop button to here as well. So which means that when the event takes place and the user clicks on the stop button, this particular event case will be fired up uh, and it takes and it executes the code inside here. Now this over on this side is called the uh, event data node. Nah. This one uh, we don't really use very much. Uh, I think for your this level here, of course we can look at where is the source of the event, All right? So for example, if you create right click on the source here, okay, I create an indicator. It will tell you the source of the event. Okay, in this case is the lab view uh, UI. Uh. UI stands for uh, user interface, eh, as you can see over here. Okay, so that is the uh, event for here. Now let's quickly run this program and see what, what happens. Now I'm going to switch on the uh, highlight execution. Uh. Switch on the light bulb and I click this run button. Eh. Now you will notice that apparently the program does not seem to be doing anything. Eh. Okay. Now this is the main difference. How do we know is this like the program is like kind of like, you know, uh, in the sleep mode if you like. You notice that uh, the program is now running as you can see. Now the loop counter does not de depict anything and uh, does not show any increment in count unlike the earlier part where we see the polling program, right? So currently the program is not seems to be doing anything, eh, right? Now when I click on the stop button, as you can see immediately, okay, the program wakes up, okay, changes the state from uh, false to true and then it passes out that value and then the program actually terminated eh, very quickly. Eh. Right, you can see the program actually stop. So let's show you again. Click run. Okay, and I click the stop. Now you see the program stops. Okay, now what you can see is that the program actually do not utilize very much the CPU processor. Okay, because it is as though that LabVIEW only wakes up when something happens on the front panel. Okay. Some, so, but that means that the CPU, the, cent the central processing unit for the computer is actually allowed to be doing something else, which is very good, right? Because over here, there's no event, ma. nothing has happened and the program is supposed to be just waiting for something to f happen or to fire up the event structure. Now, obviously, I also can quickly just do a co alternate control delete. Okay, just to show you, go to the uh, start the task manager. Okay, let's take a look over here. We look at the CPU and you notice that the CPU processor usage is very low, uh, about 17 or 5 or oh, very low actually eh, is uh, under 20%, right? Sometimes can hover around 5 to 7% or slightly more because the CPU could be doing something else, eh, right? But you notice that the usage is very, very low over here. I mean, maybe if I click the stop button here, yeah, okay. So even then, the CPU is very, very low usage, as you can see over here. Very low, right? About, yeah, very, very low percentage that's being utilized because of the usefulness of event structure. So the use of event structure is that it allows the program, the LabVIEW program, to handle the front panel user interface activities. Uh, and whenever there is an activity that occurs, it will fire up an event. It will trigger an event to occur and then LabVIEW will go and process whatever that needs to be done. If there's nothing happening there, then the LabVIEW will be put to so-called sleep mode. Uh, so-called sleep, uh, in inverted comma, uh, sleep because the LabVIEW is allowed to be uh, just waiting for an event to occur and the CPU is free up to do other things. Alright, so let's quickly add another two more buttons to see what happens over here. Now I'm going to right click and I'm going to add an event case as well uh, because I have two more buttons, right? I'm going to select the run first. Same thing, I'm going to choose value change, right? So this one will be my second case, event case number two called run first. Eh. I'm going to choose value change. I'm going to click OK. Now I have this so-called second case. Uh, now I have created another case called run first. So I'm going to put this run first button inside here and right click and change add another event case 
Now this time I'm going to use the run second. Uh, same thing, value change, click OK. Going to put this run second into here. Now, so what uh, I want to uh, be able to show you something. Let's say we display a string. Uh, let's say we display a string on the front panel here. So let's go to the string, right? String uh, indicator. Let's see over here. Going to uh, resize a bit. So this is a string, right? So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to put inside here, right click, create a constant. Uh, right? So in which I will call this one run first has occurred, right? O C C U R E D. If, uh, I think, yeah, if I spell this correctly, uh, run first has occurred. I'm going to put this uh, string inside this particular event case uh, so that uh, when the let view uh, detects this run first button being pressed, then this message run first has occurred will be passed to the string indicator over here. Now, so we have also the uh, run second, right? So I'm going to switch over to the run second case and uh, put this string into here. And uh, I will change this one called the run second. Okay, has occurred. Right, I'm going to wire this to as shown over here, right? So let's take a look. Uh. So let's quickly uh, run this program. Okay, so if I click on uh, OK, so you can switch on the light highlight execution as well. Notice that the buttons are uh, handled by the event structure itself. So I'm going to click Run o Run OK. Now you notice that, yeah, the first part, the first program, uh, I mean the first event that took place was the the user that clicked on the Run first, right? So let me just run again, right? Uh, click on Run or click on Okay, so run first has occurred. Okay, now notice that also that the iteration loop counter has incremented by one count uh, because one one of the events has took place and the counter counts one time. So if I now click on the second run okay, run second, uh, now you will notice that the second event case is being handled because of the run second button boolean button has been selected, uh, and the second event case, uh, I mean the event case has fire up uh, and it displays the string output called run second has occurred okay and at the same time it also updates the loop counter okay now I click on ok click on uh, sorry click on the uh, stop button and the program stops uh, because I switch on the uh, highlight execution now the last thing I'd like to demonstrate to you is that what happens if you can do a mouse down for example uh, so I'm going to right click on the event case add another event case uh, so this time I'm going to select this one called the pane. Uh, if I can click on mouse down, for example, right over here, mouse down. So what happens when the user click on mouse down? Maybe when the user click on mouse down, I've selected this particular event case. I'm going to just look at the coordinates. Huh? So I select this uh, event data node here. Okay, I don't need the rest though. I just want to see, uh, for example, the, the, the coordinates are where the mouse has been clicked on. So I'm going to create an indicator over here, right? So you can see, uh, I, whenever the user has, uh, clicked on the, the, uh, what do you call it? This, uh, mouse, uh, it will display to me the coordinates, uh, which I want to take a look. Or let's say, for example, over here, you have the X and the horizontal and the uh, vertical coordinates. Huh? So I'm just going to put this over to here. Okay. Now, so what happens? Let's, let's try and run this thing. I'm going to switch off the highlight execution and click on the run button. Run. Okay. Now you notice that whenever I click on this, right? Now you'll notice that the coordinates being displayed. Huh? Okay. Let's stop again. Okay. This is just the coordinates, the number of pixels on the screen. Eh? So if I run, if I click, yeah, as you can see that I, I'm left clicking on the this position. I'm, I'm at, my cursor is at this position here. I'm going to click, left click on my mouse, left click on my mouse, left click on my mouse, left click on my mouse. You notice that the coordinates has changed, uh, the horizontal and the vertical coordinates of this particular cursor. Okay, so I can click here. Now, always in lab view, the, the, the irony or the difference is that uh, at the top left hand corner here, right, the coordinate will always start from a pixel of zero zero position. So if I really move all the way to the top, uh, you notice that I'm almost hitting like the zero zero position. Uh, okay, so you can see that, yeah, 
over here is uh, zero zero. So going the at the top left hand corner la. Oh, so these are just an example to illustrate to you. So when I click on this mouse, it actually gives me the coordinates of my mouse position. Okay. So then I can click on the stop button. So I will end my video recording here. So thanks for watching.